has whooped up on number one Oklahoma the last two years. First quarter, watch OSU's left tackle, Doug Koenig, because apparently Koenig wasn't watching Dan Koenig. Cody blitz Josh Fields, causing a fumble. Tatum Bell can't pick it up. Jonathan Jackson recovers. That would lead to an Oklahoma field goal. Late first quarter, Sooners up three zip. Jason White to Mark Clayton, who is yo by Elbert Craig. I mean, yo, watch this. Absolutely gets baptized. That's what's called D Cleater. But Clayton's like, what? What? I got something for you. Second quarter, White representing to Clayton. The same man who got cracked before. This time he gets 14 yards. Same drive, third and six. White again. Clayton again. Play a please again. Clayton had six grabs, 96 yards. Now second and one from the four. Kiwan Jones taking it to the house. Oh, you brought the house. 225 yards on the ground. They're up 17-0. Third and goal, late third. White drops back. Brandon Jones is stupid open. White completed 11 passes to six different receivers. Third quarter, snap is high, and Cole Faden just minimizes the pain by just falling on it. Bob Stoops fired up Oklahoma's first play from scrimmage. End around, this is saucy. Wide open Clayton. OSU came in averaging 445 yards a game. They had 161 yards here. And watch this. Watch OSU's DBs. They freeze on the fake pitch. They got played. Brandon Jones right through. Then he catches the ball. Oklahoma State gets throttled. Sooners roll 52 to 9. OSU coach Les Miles said Oklahoma was the best team in the nation, so we're told. Said that before. Replied Bob Stoops afterwards, sometimes it's good to have that sarcasm thrown at you. Check this out. Five 50-point games this year. That ties Oklahoma's single-game record from 1997 when they had five. In fact, that year, they played an undefeated Miami team for the national championship. They could have played an undefeated Miami team this year, but that won't happen because the Canes got throttled. Our college guys talking about the Canes' loss and Oklahoma's win. Guys? He does not survive survival Saturday, but the Sooners do. They didn't just survive. They stampeded all over the Cowboys. They really did. I mean, if you look at Oklahoma, we've always talked, Mark, about that defense, the mm -hmm. speed they have up front. But I think that was the story of the game. We talked about Tatum Bell from Oklahoma State, how he had to run the ball. And he did get some yards. But the story for Oklahoma was their defensive pressure, the sort of pressure they got on Josh Fields from the start of the game. There's Dan Coder. Remember, he was hurt, had the ankle problem, runs around the end. Huge sack here. Had three sacks on the day. Oklahoma had four. Four sacks as a team. And Josh Fields, guys, who I think is a very good quarterback, 62 yards passing, complete shutdown of the passing game. And then I thought this was a key, too. Oklahoma, you know, we all talked about Jason White. He'll open up the passing game. What does Bob Stoops do, guys? 110 yards rushing in the first half. Oklahoma State had 13. 225 yards rushing for Oklahoma. Again, Bob Stoops showing why he's the best coach in college football right now. In a big game, Coach, and you look at the games that were supposed to be huge games for this football team. You go back to the Texas game. You talk about this game. This was supposed to be the biggest challenges for this Oklahoma football game team? No. What they did is they just rolled over their opponents in both of these games. The Texas game wasn't even close. This game got out of hand early. And all you can attribute this to, Bob Stoops, their head coach, and this football team because there are no challenges left for this football team. They will roll throughout the remainder of their schedule. They will be in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. They will be undefeated. Look at those scores. Look at those numbers. Add it together, 117 to 22 between Texas and Oklahoma State. Those are this two pretty powerful you, offenses you, you that, that what, Oklahoma is just embarrassed. You right? know what, guys? The other point to make about this is we've seen a lot of teams in college football this season, and every now and then you always talk about how, well, you got to give them that one game where they don't right. show up. Yeah. Oklahoma shows up every week. Every, you look at every game they play. They show up every week. It doesn't matter who they play. They play with intensity for four quarters. Nobody is even close to Oklahoma. Nobody. Oklahoma's by far the best team. They're easily going to win the national championship. It's November. Uh, I call uh, it. Forget <laughs> it. Well, the, it's big, over. the big picture right now is how far does my Miami drop in the polls. How does that affect their computer ranking in the BCS? How high will Virginia Tech rise? Is it USC or LSU or Florida State next in line? We're going to talk like about all fun. of that on College Game Day Final coming up tonight, 1230 Eastern Time, and as soon as these guys are finished with Sports Center. Right now, back over to you guys. 40 love. So after everything's been shaking, stirred, separated, here's who survived in the BCS top five. OU big. Miami down. Florida State, USC. All right. Georgia, who was thought to have such a nice, clear path that they could win out. Well, no longer. So what's all this mean? We'll head to Norman, Oklahoma, where Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet have been watching football sun up to sundown.
Well, on Survival Saturday, half the BCS top 10 did not survive. So you're going to have some BCS chaos. And for the fourth time in six years, you will not have a clear-cut undefeated versus undefeated BCS National Championship game. Miami is the team that lost that still remains in the national title hunt. It's their first loss. But their loss was a huge boost for teams like USC and Ohio State and Florida State and also LSU. And guys, what it also means is teams with two losses, teams like Michigan, might not even be out of the national championship chase. What we also know is Oklahoma looked really good in this place yeah, today, didn't yeah. they? They played pretty well, good Let's put it this way. Oklahoma's the best football team I, I've seen in person. By far, I don't see anybody else beating them. In fact, if I was an Oklahoma fan, I'd get my tickets ready for New Orleans. Yeah, I think it's time to make the reservations. Make the reservations. Look at the rest of the uh, teams that they have to play in the regular season. You look at the team that unfortunately has to play in the Big 12 championship game. They're heading to New Orleans. Even if the teams they're playing, even if they happen to not show up excited and inspired to play, there still isn't anybody that they play on their schedule that can beat them sure that Oklahoma could be characterized as a raccoon backed into the corner, but they were certainly agitated by one little phrase, or so we're told. Les Miles says Oklahoma's the best team in college football, or so we're told. Now, Miles went on to praise the Sooners, but that was conveniently left out to motivate Oklahoma to put the beat down on the Pokes, who had beaten them two straight years. Dan Cody, weren't even sure Dan was going to play. Tatum Bell, ill advised, tried to pick up the fumble, couldn't scoop it up, led to a Sooner field goal. Jason White, Heisman Trophy candidate, finding Jawan Rankins along the sideline. That's worth another peek, guys. That's some dandy footwork right there. Just takes one in college, as we know. Kiwan Jones slamming it in. Boomer Sooner starting to roll. Up 10 0. Paying customer. Yes, I, I would say that's an yeah. accurate sign. They are so good at scary. Another good drive. Early in the second quarter, 17 0 OU. And that Sooner D. Much better than advertised. Keep an eye on number 94. Defensive tackle Dusty Dvorak right here. Just whips the center, goes around him, gets penetration in the backfield. Bam, right there. Stops the running back in the backfield. No. He's fired up, but take a look at defensive end Dan Coney coming off the corner. The left tackle, poor technique, dips his shoulders right there, bang, gets to the quarterback That's again. Technique, That's Dan terrific Coney. technique for him. But Rashawn Woods tries to get going on this screen and can't get it done. The OU defense today, four sacks, two interceptions, two fumble recoveries, and they held Oklahoma State to 62 yards in passing. Defense was awesome, but so was the run game. Look here, this is Keywan Jones, just right up the middle, great blocking 10 yards, and then how about Ronaldo Works, guys? I mean, see the inside handoff here, really not a lot there makes a couple moves 21 yards sets up another touchdown to me the story of the game yes Jason White was great 50 carries 221 yards rushing for Oklahoma and Stoops always has a little bag of tricks and they certainly weren't going to take the boot off the throat of the pokes at this point Bradley to Clayton on the reverse pass for the touchdown and then White just gets scissored didn't stop him from dropping a perfectly thrown ball on Brandon Jones Jason White didn't strike the post, didn't stick a finger in the air, and that would appear to be a cowboy who's beaten, or so I'm told, or so I'm shown. Yeah. 52 to nine, the Sooners oh. hang half a hundred on the post, and, and well, the Aggies just didn't have a good day in Norman, as they used to be called, 52 to nine. However, the college game day guys, Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Kirkstreet saw the demolition in Soonerland. Well, Reese, it certainly got our attention down here when the Stoops brothers said that never in their 61 games here at Oklahoma had the Sooners been better prepared to play a football game than they were for Bedlam. Bedlam? This was beat down. And afterwards, Bob Stoops just kind of swatted aside. Oklahoma State is just another little obstacle on the way to bigger and better things. I don't care much about talk. Uh, I'll say it again after the game. We like it when there's a lot to play for. And uh, we showed up tonight, played for it, and uh, we played pretty well. But this game doesn't mean much to us uh, if we don't go out and win championships. That's what Oklahoma football has been about and it will remain about. Uh, I think it meant more to them to talk about the last two years and things that happened in the past. But we know as a team, that's why it wasn't no trash talking going on with us, that things in the past can't help you uh, no way, shape, or form with the uh, present day and what's going to happen this week. And they played like that. It was not feisty yeah. or vengeful. It was just businesslike, methodical. It was devastating. And they were a very, very impressive football team in every aspect. But as a former coach, I really appreciated the way they played on the offensive line. They can run, protect, and also they can pass, protect. Now, the first thing about it, Jason White threw 28 passes, one 
sack. They gave him plenty of time to hit receivers like Mark Clayton on this one. Then Mark Clayton right here in the corner. Beautiful concentration. Ronaldo Works was the inside runner. They got over 200 yards in their tailback position, and they are an impressive football team in every single aspect of the offensive game, especially up front. On Good both, looking On team. both sides True. up front in the trenches. Now, you can hear Derek Strait say, you know what, we didn't have much time to talk trash. And you, you look at that and you think, you know what, it was businesslike, it was professional, but this was a motivated Oklahoma team. They were tired of hearing about 35-6 to 6 last year. They were tired of hearing about Rashawn Woods and Josh Fields. And in the first seven possessions, they took Oklahoma State out of the game. 27 yards in their first seven possessions, five punts, two turnovers. And by that time, they were down 24 to nothing. It was was devastating it, they were athletic they dominated the line of scrimmage they didn't allow Oklahoma State's offense into the end zone and this was a team on a mission now we keep talking about this is the best team in the country I'd rather compare this Oklahoma defense to previous Mike Stoops defense this is the best Oklahoma defense we've seen in the five years that Bob Stoops has been here they are incredibly athletic they say they're not into payback but you know what they got next it's yeah, Texas A&M a and beat them last year. year. Yeah. Embarrassed their defense. Oh, no, so another see. business like non payback win, perhaps, uh -oh. next week. Good Look out. Coach Fran. Look good out. Buddy. Now, everybody in the Big 12 North now with a pair of losses. Nebraska already lost to Missouri, as you know. Date with Kansas State later. Oklahoma showing the way in the Big 12. But I'm, I'm glad I don't have to go on TV and get my top five because it's it's tough. It's controversial. Lee. Well, I got LSU in there. I lived, lost one ball game and they beat Georgia. Uh, they lost to Georgia. Ohio State, you got to get. Hey, they only lost one ball game. Florida State's a good shot out. That's a good shot out against Notre Dame. Then USC, which I think is the second best football team to the best football team, Oklahoma. Right now, it's Oklahoma, USC, and New Orleans. Finally, some controversy here with these top yeah, fives. We sat some. here last week, and we knew it would be changed up. I didn't realize it would be this crazy. I think Ohio State right now, they were very fortunate to pull out a win against Hop in Happy Valley against Penn State at five. Uh, Virginia Tech, I know it's crazy to put them all the way up in the top four, but the win that they had and the fashion that they did it, I put them up at number four. LSU continues to go out and play great football. And then, of course, the way everybody, I guess, will agree, USC at two and Oklahoma at number one. So it's going to be an interesting week to find out what the real top five is. I like your top five, but I like you LSU three. You feel funny about doing that, but who else are you going to put up there? Uh, there's no one. Who are you going to put in the Heisman race? Oh, I'm telling you what, John Navar, fourth quarter oh. again from Michigan, number three, second Eli Manning. The guy deserves it. 33 years since Miss Mississippi's had a football team like this and Jason White, number one. Well, Eli Manning, you, you know, you've been talking about I'm him all you, year. And we all have agreed that the guy's a great quarterback, but now he's winning and he's doing so many great things. And, and that's the key for Eli Manning to stay in this race and maybe have a chance to win in his winning games. I have Jason White at number two. Everybody's talking about Jason White. He's a great player. I love him. I'm not taking anything away from him. I just think that Larry Fitzgerald is the best individual player in college football. I would vote for Larry Fitzgerald for the Heisman Trophy. I have a vote, so I guess I will vote yeah. eventually for Larry Today. Fitzgerald. Today. Today. There. Yeah, let's do that. Let's speed something. <laughs> hey, let's crank up the speed rush. I need a minute and 30 seconds on the clock. Each guy has a timeout to challenge his partner's point of view. Trev, we'll get it started with you. Should Oklahoma status have any bearing on Jason White's Heisman chance? Yeah, I think he's part of it. I mean, the reason why they have that status is because of Jason White. But I think, look, we're here in the E block, and we haven't talked about Larry Fitzgerald <laughs> TV yet. Term. Again, against Boston College, 150 yards receiving. The best player, the most outstanding player in college football is Larry Fitzgerald. In the clock, Trev, who will give the Sooners the best game in the Nokia Sugar Bowl? I think it's USC because I think USC has the best overall collection of athletes. Now, I know they're young, but what you're seeing is all these freshmen. Now, this Steve Smith, this wide receiver, we haven't seen a lot of another freshman stepping up. I don't think they can beat Oklahoma. I'm just saying they have the talent, young talent, to play with Oklahoma. Clock is out. You didn't use your timeout. You, you have can't a chance. We're done. We're week. out of time. You want it now? No. You see our Wendy's Heisman update now, and Jason White continues to put up fine numbers. You guys believe that Fitzgerald is the most outstanding player in the country. Which absolutely. is the definition of what the Heisman is. Am You're I absolutely right. I live in Phoenix, and I'll tell you what, a lot of people on the West Coast are talking about Larry Fitzgerald, and that's unusual. Chris Perry may be getting himself back into the mix after a sparkling performance against Michigan State. Eli Manning, slow, steady on the outside. Big numbers. The Rebels continue to win. 
Matt Leiner, Chris Fowler mentioned, maybe the whole Carson Palmer thing works against him. Leiner's been impressive. It's not his fault. And hey, hey, Josh Harris from Bowling Green, too, continues to put up great numbers, although Bowling Green, this is a season total for him. Harris had Saturday. Survival Saturday is all about surviving, advancing, and having Gloria Gaynor sing about you. <laughs> Those who made Gloria proud include Bob Stoops' team and Frank Beamer's squad and the men of Troy and the mighty Gators, which I will no longer call crocodiles after the way no they way. have turned their season around. Florida State rolling on. Ohio State, they find a way. It's hard of a champion right there. Find a way to win. Texas, Nebraska did not survive survival Saturday. An abysmal offensive effort by the Huskers. And atrocious, perhaps, even some would say. And Michigan knocks off Michigan State, handing the Spartans their first Big Ten loss of the season. Now, the BCS, obviously a major shakeup. The top ten teams in the BCS standings last week, five of them lost. Oklahoma still obviously going to be on top. Our projections are going to go a little something like this. The BCS projections presented by Allstate. Our Brad Edwards, BCS guru, says it will be Oklahoma and USC, but he thinks it's going to be very, very close between the Trojans and the Seminoles for second and third place. Based on the assumption that SC is going to be second in both polls, key question, where will Miami fall in the polls? Yep. And how high will Virginia Tech rise? And what do you do with LSU? Some might even have LSU third, size third, and that could alter things. But it looks as if right now our projections say it will be Oklahoma and USC when the BCS standings are unveiled on SportsCenter.